What's up guys, Big Clive 34 coming at you today with Cars and Clive, the antidote for your automotive hangover, coming at you at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time every single Monday. And uh, you know, if you're not sure what it is, we kind of talk about my project truck, which is what we're talking about today. That's what's in this box, is a little something, something to update you on that. The car community, hot news, all kinds of stuff like that. So that's what you can catch on Mondays here. And uh, like I said, we're talking about the contents of this box today. We're gonna get to that in just two seconds. What's inside this box is basically a giant I told you so. I don't really do that much, but that's, that's what it is. Uh, this is gonna be broadcasted twice, once on the vlog channel and once on Big Clive 34. So if you get a little bit confused, that's why the vlog channel is getting this video a day early as all of my Monday videos go up on the vlog channel a day early. So if you're watching this one on the vlog channel or the main channel, remember to like the video either way. I appreciate it. Well, only like it if you actually like it. Subscribe below. Uh, if you're on the main channel, which you most likely are because it has a lot more traffic than the vlog channel, I urge you to go check out the vlog channel. We have some exclusive content over there uh, that's not gonna be found here. This week in particular, we're talking about sponsorships. Um, I basically went into how I got my sponsorship to try and help Help you get a sponsorship so that's a vlog channel exclusive if you head over to Claude vlogs you can see this video many others and uh, I would recommend it I mean I'm pretty awesome so yeah well that was a little bit conceited but anyway let's get into this video so let's talk about what's in this box if you've been following with the truck project you know uh, I've done several things to it now still not still not roadworthy but the parts are coming back in uh, these are my fuel injectors, that's what's inside of it. Ow! Anyway, so if you were following along with the injectors originally, <laughs> that's what you missed. I did this little thing called decapping. If you're not really sure what it is, basically you take, just as the name says, the little cap around the tip of the injector and you grind it off and it's supposed to give you a lot more fuel flow. From what I've read, see this is the part that a lot of people don't get. You have to go out there and if you see something that you don't agree with, you look it up and do your own research. A lot of people just, you know, they're not very, they're not very good up here in the head, so they immediately criticize it and don't even realize that it's been done for years and years and years. I think a lot of people thought that I originated this, which isn't, you know, the part that makes them stupid. The part that makes them stupid is how they reacted to it. After wide criticism, the results came out very well. So real, real quickly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna describe to you the results, I'm not a professional. So if I mess anything up, which might happen, um, feel free to correct me, but I did my research, looked around, and this is how I understand the results. Shout out to Eric Durr, Durr Injector Services. They didn't pay me to say this, but he's super helpful. And if you can't read this because it doesn't look like it's focusing, I'll put his info down in the description below as well. Um, if you wanna try this for yourself or hit him up or whatever you wanna to do to try and do this. Anyways, we got the injectors back and after literally like at least half of the people, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down wise, that like they didn't think this was, you know, they thought it was stupid. They thought it wasn't gonna work. I got a split decision on the likes and dislike ratio. Basically what I did was I, I have two, actually have two separate sets of injectors that I sent him. So he had 16 total, uh, basically all decapped. He, he put them on his uh, flow bench and he got the results from it. So what they test is two different metrics. Uh, and they check out the spray pattern. After I explained these to you, I actually called up Eric yesterday and I tried to get some of the questions answered that a lot of people seemed to have, whether they were being smart asses about it or not. I tried to kind of gauge what people were thinking and ask him about it anyway. The spray patterns were all fine uh, for what we're using it for. And he used what's called a dynamic injector rate and a static injector rate. So basically, uh, the way that I see this, the way that I interpret it from what Eric explained to me and how I, what I looked up when I went online was dynamic is basically over a series of different pulse settings. So you're measuring the injector throughout the whole range. It's kind of like a power band and seeing how much power you make throughout the whole power band, but instead it's just, you know, different pulse rates and checking out the injector over a wide variety. Cause I mean, you can see how many pounds per hour an injector can make at its peak performance, but seeing it over a wide range of pulses is more efficient because it could be really shitty to down low and really good up top or 
whatever. So uh, the dynamic rate, we came up with eight. We came up with eight injectors and the dynamic rate was off between those eight by 1.5 percent. They were all around like 64, 65 cc's for the dynamic rate, all separated by this 1.2 percent. So they're pretty close after he cleaned them and flowed them and did all that. Then you also have your static rate, which is pounds per hour. Um, I believe that I read that these flow 28 pounds per hour uh, from the factory and the rates here are in the 70s, one even read above 80. We actually got rid of that one. It's not about finding the most eight most efficient, but rather the eight that are grouped closest together. So they're in the mid 70s for the most part as far as static flow rate goes. So we more than doubled the pounds per hour from the injectors and Eric seems to be pretty confident in the work. We've seen it done hundreds of times before. We're just gonna put these in and uh, you know what we're gonna do, don't you? Still gonna send it. I'm gonna insert the clip of me asking Eric a couple of questions to better answer your questions about how this stuff works. So thanks to him, shout out to Eric. And again, uh, their injector service info's in the description below. The, the results here and then, um, See, like people kind of freaked out originally when I when I did the video of actually decapping the injectors. Like, yeah. there were like hundreds of comments calling me an idiot, basically. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> I oh, wanted yeah. I wanted to get like uh, the opinion of somebody who's been through probably thousands of these real quick. Um, I mean, I'm gonna call it a five gallon bucket full. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to take too too much of your time up here, but uh, no, man. Whatever you need to know, just give this holler. Cool. So, I guess uh, they're all kind of basic questions. Like uh, starting off with like, if somebody sends you a set, how often do you see them not work? Like, do you normally get eight, sixteen? You know, how many do you send back saying you need to send me more? Or, you know, something well, like that. Yeah. Know. If you're using the Delphi truck injectors, right. you're going to need 16. That's And sometimes it cuts close right. with those 16s. I've had you know people send me 16, and you know, 8 was all that was going to be there. You know, and sometimes people might have a spare or two. Um, as far as like ones that I get that I'll just call from the get-go, either A, it, it leaks or it's stuck open, or... Sometimes, you know, I'll get injectors that are stuck shut, but you can a lot of times get them unstuck, but sometimes you can't, you know. So those are going to go in the, you know, do not use pile from right. the get-go. Uh, any that have really low flow, now, it, it's just kind of my subjective thinking on it. It's like, I know what these injectors do. This one is just too low to be considered a decap, right. you know, Delphi truck injector, what I see the normal flow as. Right. You know, that might be a little long-winded, but sorry. Right. No, that's all right, because, yeah, I see that, I mean, I don't know about statistically speaking, and, and you know, I'm sure that you don't remember the specific set, but I, I, mine all came back relatively close, so I was just kind of curious about that. Um, yeah. Did you, oh, you with me. Did you send me eight or sixteen? Sixteen. Okay, there you go. All right. I was gonna say, wow, did you send me a set of eight and you got eight out of them? <laughs> wow, awesome stuff, man. Right on. Um, so then the next thing that people were kind of concerned with is, I guess that uh, you definitely, I see on here, check. Um, the spray pattern and, yeah. and people like over and over and over again just kept throwing the word atomization out there so i like, know between spray pattern and atomization like i guess that's not really a concern if they go to you and come back they're you know that's not no, really to worry about if the spray pattern on it is really you know shooting sideways or something like that that's another reason it'll get cold out just from the get-go you know it's like this is not a usable injector right um uh, but as far as people weirding out about the spray pattern, they need to go look at the spray pattern on a deck of 60 or 80. Right. You know, there's a pretty good standard that everybody knows, everybody loves them. And, you know, the spray pattern on a decap injector, as long as nobody nicked the pentel or, you know, something like that, right. is <laughs> there's not a whole heck of a lot of difference in those two. They're pretty much a straight stream with a little bit of feathering around the edges. Right. You know, it's not a big plume like you see on a, a billet atomizer, but 
you know, even the new Hollies, uh, you know, they have a three hole tip and they just shoot three straight streams, you know, coming out. Right. So, so it's not, you know, like, I guess at that point, atomization isn't really, because it's, you know, so much fuel's being used, I guess it doesn't really matter, right? Well, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter, but I, I think in looking at stuff, volume matters more than the pattern. Like, I would rather have a set of injectors that were really close together, but maybe didn't have anything but a straight stream as opposed to something that was, you know, all over the map as far as flow rates, but has a really nice pattern. Right. You know, uh, the old uh, EV-1 Bosch injectors, they're... Uh, natural gas 160s right. those things have a great pattern on them they're wonderful right, right. <laughs> but you know it's not that big a deal you could probably make more power with a holly with the three strings than you could with the old boss injector right because it outflows it i got you i mean that, that makes sense uh that's almost too intuitive <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, and then I guess that the, the last kind of question I have here is, um, I mean, I guess that these aren't really for everybody at the end of the day. Like, who would you yeah. recommend kind of go this way, and who would you recommend just, you know, goes and buys something, I guess? I, I mean, telling, I really hate telling somebody how to spend their money. Right. If you're trying to go the budget route, yes, pick them up. Uh, I would rather you did that than go buy some super cheap injectors on eBay. It's like, you know, when they're creepy cheap. Right. You know, I would rather you did just go to the junkyard and pull some out. That's also, another incentive is if you have these injectors sitting around your house already, you know, right. you're out zero money for the injectors. Right. If somebody's going to go out and spend... 40 bucks on a set or 50 bucks on a set and then send them to me you're already over two hundred dollars you might have been able to find a set of 80 seamless deck does for around that price right now you might want to have them checked out too you know but right because you know, you know I, I think to buy a proper set of injectors new for even like a 600 ish horsepower application it would still probably be like four or five hundred dollars so you know, that's how I was trying to justify it to people. Um, but, I mean, yeah. since I had these already on the truck and I got another set for free, you know, I figured yeah. it would work. And it was, you're, uh, you're already ahead of the game. Yeah. So. You know, just owning them already. There's no money out on it. Right. You know, so somebody who's trying to build a nice motor, yeah, you, you might want to just say heck with it and get the 80s if you can get a decent deal on them. Right. You know, but only only time is going to tell on how well you know all these hold up. Uh, a factory injector is a pretty tough little thing, honestly. Right. I've had people send me EV one type injectors, uh, a forty two pound, like a Kawasaki green top, and the motor was on fire. And you know, a lot of that plastic was melted, but it still made contact and it still worked. And I was like, wow, you go, guy. Right. <laughs> you know? right. Yeah. But, so, I mean, I guess that that was, I guess that kind of answered my next question. I was going to kind of get into a little bit about, like, I mean, since they flow well and have a good spray pattern and dynamic and static rates are kind of close, that's kind of sort of like removing risk from the equation. Well, not, you know, you never really remove it, but it's not. It's a race car. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, we all know what we're doing. Exactly. Um, but, like, people seem to think it's like a super risky, super, you know, like, you're kind of throwing a shot in the dark here and hoping that it works. And it's, yeah, it's not well, so much, I don't think it's so much like that. Maybe you could uh, shed some light on that. I think a, a lot of the people who are saying it's risky, you know, when it first started up, and you'll still see people that, oh, I just went and got them out of a truck, decapped them, put them in the car, and I'm rolling. Right, and yeah. There's, there's like 99% of the risk. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've sent or showed pictures to people it's like okay here's you know here's the filters out of the last 16 injectors somebody sent me you know it's like can you see inside all the dirt right. you know kind of a thing it's like you know here's most of your battle just make sure the thing works and it is flowing and it doesn't have you know a pile of e85 laid in it right. um, dried up o-rings because that's how we start fires kids you know i got you so it's to me for what you pay me to do it it's 
steep insurance. Yeah. I mean, it, you, you, there's nothing you can fix on that motor if you melt something down that's cheaper than having me at least, you know, look at them, make sure they're usable. Right. You know, you, you might not have the nicest match flowing set, yada, yada, but, you know, at least you, this, you know they all work. <laughs> right. Absolutely. All right, well, I think that's all that I got for you. I do appreciate okay. it. You're uh, your time here. Oh, no, no problem, man. Like I said, you're, just call and want to ask questions, just holler at me. Right on, Eric. Uh, okay. All right, have a good one. All right, take care, man. You too, buddy. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys very much for watching. This has been Cars and Clive. I appreciate you checking it out. Uh, I'm just going to nag you with the normal stuff now. Vlog channel, check it out. Uh, get these videos a week early. Get vlog exclusive content. I talked about sponsorships this week. And uh, as always, remember to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And subscribe below to uh, see my ugly face every week. <laughs>